In this tutorial, we're going to pick up where we left off and continue learning more about inheritance. So to get started, let's close our default package and right-click the source folder, and we will create a new package. Let's call this package overriding and click finish. Now let's right-click our overriding package and select new class and create a class called base and click finish. And let's do the same thing again, create a new class, and name this one subclass, and click finish. And as you might expect, we'll have our subclass extend base, and let's throw in a comment above the class definition to remind ourselves what this is doing. So subclass is inheriting all the variables and methods defined in base. So in the last tutorial I had our child class inheriting a variable from our parent class. In this tutorial we're going to inherit a method. So let's go over to our base class and create that method. Let's say public void say hello. And inside of the method let's do a syso control spacebar and we will print out hello. And now let's have our subclass call this method. So we'll go back over to subclass and let's create a main method by typing main and pressing control spacebar hitting enter. And now let's create a new instance of subclass by saying subclass s equals new subclass which we'll call the constructor and we will create the constructor by pressing control spacebar and selecting default constructor. And now, just as in the last tutorial with our JFrame, we have access to the methods that are defined in the class we're inheriting. So we can simply call our say hello method. And sure enough, if we run the application, we'll see that hello is printed out to the console. So what's happening on this line is we are calling the say hello method defined in base. So you might remember from the last tutorial when I pressed control spacebar to bring up code hinting, we had these options to override methods that we're inheriting. And sure enough, here's our say hello method and we can override it from the base class. So what happens when we select that? You'll see that Eclipse generates the method for us. And as of right now, everything works exactly the same as it did before. If we were to run the application, we would see that hello is still printed to the console. So now if we look at the method body, we'll see this super dot say hello. And all this is doing is actually doing the work to call that method from our base class. That's what the keyword super means. If you remember using the keyword this to refer to this instance, in this case it would be this instance of subclass, what super does is it refers to the instance of the class that this class extends. In other words, super here would be an instance of base. So it makes sense that we are calling our say hello method on that base instance. But for now you don't have to worry about super too much. Let's see what happens if we do another syso and print out hi. And now if we run the application we'll see that both hello and hi get printed to the console. So when our constructor runs and our say hello method is called, we are actually jumping into this method now which is defined in our subclass rather than in our base class. And what this method is doing is saying call the method in our base class and then do a system out dot print line and print out hi. So what overriding a method allows you to do is to define a method that you're inheriting in your subclass and either add to or completely change its functionality. For example, if we commented out the super dot say hello line, our functionality would be completely changed because if we run the application, only hi is printed out. That means we're not even running the method in our base class anymore. So now that you hopefully have some idea of what's going on here, it's time to have some fun. Let's create a new class in our overriding package. 
and let's call this class drawing and click finish. Now drawing we're going to have extend JFrame and let's create a main method by typing main pressing control spacebar hitting enter and let's create a new instance of drawing and let's create the constructor and now we have just as in the last tutorial a JFrame window to work with and as in the last tutorial let's set the size to 500 by 500 and set the visibility to true and now if we run the application sure enough there's our window and now comes the fun part we are going to override the method that's coming from the JFrame class that controls what is drawn inside of this frame and that method is called paint so if we open up code hinting you'll see that one of the options is to override the method called paint so let's select that and right now just as before if we were to run it right now everything works exactly the same now let's see what happens if we comment out the super.paint method call now you'll see it's a little bit different we no longer have our gray background now the background is just white so what we've just done is completely removed all of the inherited functionality of our paint method and now we can define our own custom functionality to say how we want this window to be painted now if we take a look at this method we'll see that it expects a parameter of type graphics now graphics is an object just like the ones we've created and worked with in the past and all we need to do is learn how to work with this graphics object to control what is painted inside of our window and we can see that our graphics object is referred to by this local variable g so if we were to say g dot and look at the code assist we can see some of the methods we can call on that graphics object now there's all kinds of options here we can draw images, we can draw strings and polygons. But I think the good one to start with would be g dot draw rect, short for draw rectangle. And you can see that this method expects four parameters. It wants an integer x and integer y, which controls where on the screen it's going to be placed, and it expects an integer width and an integer for the height. So let's say we want to place this at 50-50 and have a width of 100 and a height of 25. Now what happens when we run the application? And now you'll see that a rectangle is drawn on our frame. So what else can we do? There's another method that we can do on the graphics object. We can set the color which basically sets the drawing color. It's like clicking color in a paint program. And this expects a color C. Now there are a couple of ways you can use color. You can create a new instance of color by typing new color and taking a look at different ways you can construct a color. For example, you could pass an RGB value. So if we were to pass 0 red, 0 green, and 255 for blue, this would give us a pure blue color. Another way you can do it is g.setColor and type the class name itself and statically reference predefined colors. So we could pick green. So after this line executes, our color is set to blue. So if we were to draw another shape, this time let's say we draw a oval at say 250 now let's give it a width of 50 and a height of 50 so it is a circle now if we were to run the application we'll see that we have our rectangle drawn and we have our oval drawn and I really suggest you spend some time just playing with this graphics object and 
trying out different methods. For example, we could, instead of drawing a rectangle, we could fill a rectangle, which expects the exact same parameters. So we could say 50, 200, 100 by 25. Now we run the application again. We'll see that this time, instead of just drawing the outline of the shape, it filled the shape. So what else can we do? Let's try draw string. And there's multiple options for this, but let's choose the second one that accepts a string parameter and an x and a y. So for our string, we'll say my string. And for the x, let's say 200 and a y of 200. And now if we run the application, my string has been drawn onto our window. And the color is also green, which makes sense because the last time we set the color, we set it to green. If we wanted to change that color back to black, we could go above our draw string and say set color, color dot black. And run the application again. And this time, our text is drawn in black. So the whole idea here is less to show you how to draw on a window and more to show you the power of inheritance and particularly the power of overriding a method that you are inheriting. In this case we are overriding how our window itself is painted and that allows us to completely customize what happens to the window when the program runs. Now if we go back to our subclass and just like if we were to comment out our super dot say hello and run the application we have completely overridden the behavior that is defined in our base class. Now in this case it's a little more boring because we don't have a fancy window set up for us to play with. But in our drawing program you can start to see the power of overriding existing functionality. And just like I said in the last tutorial, if you don't quite get it yet, don't worry because there is still a lot more to learn about inheritance. Thanks for watching.